promotion is a registered Christian charity designed to show love in action for those struggling with homelessness, addictions or marginalised from society. It began after I volunteered in a similar bus and I felt such a passion for that type of work. I still remember the first time I went out to help and I was shaking, pouring the tea and the guys were shaking from drug withdrawal and it was a bit of a messy combination. But despite that, I just felt so passionate that this was something God wanted me to be involved in. Sadly, that bus went off the road, but I became proactive in encouraging others to start a similar work. I really believed there was a need and if someone could start something, then I could help out again. After two years of praying, I became convicted by the verse that says that we're to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And I realised I had been hearing from God, but I hadn't recognised he was asking me to do this. I had loads of reasons why I wasn't the right person for the job. I was a single 27 year old from a sheltered background. I had no experience of addiction in my own life and no exposure to violence. And I just seemed a very unlikely candidate. But that was when I learned that God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. I started to explore options, writing to companies to ask for prices to buy a bus and I signed up to run a 10k to raise money towards a bus and at that time I couldn't run to catch a bus so that was quite a challenge but I remember saying to my friend even if it takes two years to raise enough money to buy a bus at least the wheels are in motion. And that's where the name came from because as soon as we stepped out in faith and put the wheels in motion, everything started to fall into place. Souter Charitable Trust responded to my request and they stated that they would donate a 25-seater bus free of charge. They supported us to kit out the bus, making it more sociable. We needed a kitchen, but instead of offering old kitchen units, Lloyd's Kitchens gave us a brand new kitchen of our choice. That was really significant to me because so often the people we support get the leftovers and I really wanted this to be a place where they felt valued and worthy of the best. I felt strongly that we had to be committed and be there every week. These guys are often let down and they find it hard to trust people and so I really wanted to ensure that we ran a service that they could rely on. Ten years on we haven't missed a week and that's testament to the wonderful team that we have. In order for the service to be reliable, I wanted to be able to drive the bus because it was my burden and I didn't want to put that pressure on anyone else. After sharing that with staff from Stagecoach, Souter Charitable Trust then agreed to put me through my PSV test, which is the scariest thing I've ever done. Taking three attempts to pass my car licence, it was an absolute miracle that I passed my bus test first time. This really showed me that that verse is true. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I certainly didn't achieve that on my own strength. The final challenge before getting on the road was insurance. Most of our money had been used and the cheapest quote we could find was for £997. Two days later, we received an anonymous donation for £1,000. That took me to my knees in tears as it felt the, the confirmation that God was in the work and would provide everything required to make it happen. Over the last 10 years, this has been the case time and time again, with provision arriving often before we even knew there was a need. We upgraded to a 35 seater in 2015 in order to meet demand, which again was donated free of charge. God is so good and so faithful. Each week we go out in the bus with volunteers in the kitchen preparing food and drinks while others distribute and engage in conversations. Our longing is that through these conversations we're able to point individuals to God, the one that we believe has the power to break every chain and bring comfort to every situation. We often get asked why we do what we do, which is a perfect opportunity to share the gospel and the love of God. Our most recent expansion was to source a second vehicle in order to provide a place for more personal one-to-one -one conversations, prayer, filling in paperwork for rehabs and housing and things like that. Again, God provided more than we could ask or imagine, with a vehicle already kitted out with tables and chairs, DVD players and a fridge. So we're looking forward to seeing how God will use this for his glory. We have been blessed beyond measure by all of the volunteers that have been part of our team over the years. Their commitment, dedication, love and care is second to none and we would be lost without them. It's easy to associate Wheels in Motion with one or two people, but without the backing of an amazing team, there would be no Wheels in Motion. From those who help on the bus, donate, 
pray, drive, clean, shop, promote and much more. We're filled with gratitude for each person who plays a part. I especially have to mention my mum and dad, who play such a big part in everything that is Wheels in Motion. The work they do in the background is phenomenal, without asking for a bit of praise. We'd be lost without them. Sometimes we see lives changed, and sometimes we see lives lost, but it's always worth it. You know, the main reason I'm here is to build relationships with people. Uh, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that uh, talks about us being uh, uh, taken for darkness into light. And that's been my experience. So a lot of the guys who come to the bus, uh, their lives, you know, and the, the, their personal circumstances were circumstances that used to be mine. The main message is that Jesus can change people's lives, but even if people are not open to that, there's still alternatives, there's practical solutions. Uh, most of my time uh, working for the bus or on behalf of the bus is spent elsewhere, you know, meeting with people on a one-to-one -one basis and, you know, spending time uh, developing those relationships that, that start uh, at the bus. I want to thank them every, every, every so much and a lot for the, the bit of their arts. They are here always for supporters. And the Van helps the homeless people. People, homeless people oh, think they take up in that. So it's somewhere to come for a friendly chat right and now. help and something to eat. Yeah, so long have you been coming to the bus again? Seven years. Seven years. So why do you keep coming back? Because I enjoy the company. Anything else that you always ask for that not everybody asks uh, for? Private prayer. Private prayer. And why do you enjoy that? Because it helps. Do you like helps you through your week? It helps you through Well, I've been coming to the bus for about five or six years now and uh, I was invited here originally by Suzanne. I used to uh, see her at Broken Chains. And, well, yeah, I, I, I just think it's a great place. Well, I didn't used to come to the bus, I used to stay away from the bus. But eventually I made myself come further on to the, and then eventually come on to the bus. I always sit in my special seat, but tonight I just sat in the big seat. <laughs> My birthday a couple of weeks ago, they sang happy birthday to me. Come here for four weeks now. Eh, well, basically, we'll be lost with it. And I'm very, very grateful for what they're doing for everybody. It's amazing and the support we get at the soup bus at here. People are nice. Suzanne, Paul, you know, are amazing. The food, if you're struggling, you can come here and get some to eat. I've been coming here now for six, seven years when Suzanne did the wee bus. Once we got this one, I started taking on the role of looking after the bus, getting it ready for a Thursday. So I started coming to the bus uh, about six years ago as well, and I learned about it through my grandpa um, when he started working here as well. And um, I just wanted to gain some experience and just learn about different people's backgrounds, um, supporting them, providing comfort. Um, through hard times and just being a, a listening ear for people. It's been really enjoyable and rewarding experience. Um, you can see Suzanne and Paul very well heart for people that have been struggling in their life for one way or another. Um, and you can see it's really affected people when they come on and it helps them. Um, and I've been really blessed to be a part of it. Well, I just prepare the food really, really for the bus and then maybe help serve it and just background kind of work. I just play after the boys and out at the bus and just to communicate with them as the best I can and do what I can with them. Uh, and they seem to respond to me quite well and get my way, tell us if there any problems they usually talk to us about them and all the rest of it. And 
you know, I just enjoy doing that with them. Yeah, and I've got quite close relationships with quite a few of them now, just through the years and all the rest of it. And I say they're summing up right from almost 10 years ago that are still coming back and forward yet to the bus. And we're seeing some good results with some of them, changing their lives around the output quite a wee bit. So. I enjoy it all really. Um, I feel as if it's a wee extension of the family now. But the main things I've really enjoyed, I think, is when we go in the days away or maybe even the pantomime and just watching their expressions and everything. And I think it's really humbling because they're so thankful to get a day just out of here where we take everything for granted. It's been a blessing for me because I've learned so much about other people and how to appreciate the life that I've got and also to work and just sometimes it's just a chat people need just to uh, show, give them a bit of encouragement. We're always a volunteer and one night I said to Jim about uh, maybe driving the bus. So on occasion I've driven the bus and uh, it's great to be able to help in these ways. But also uh, another great thing uh, that Suzanne has allowed me to do is to go into schools and talk to young people who are involved in the youth philanthropy uh, initiative. And it's great just to be able to talk to them and some of them get really uh, enthused about the, the bus and we've been very fortunate on two occasions uh, they've actually won the, the prize of £3,000 uh, for the bus. We've had times when we've had very sad times, when we've lost people or people that were so close to are really struggling and that that can be very hard and you leave the bus feeling feeling very concerned. But there's always there's always happy moments. You know, no matter what happens, we've always, you know, got times when we laugh and maybe also cry as well. So it's a real privilege to be part of Wheels of Washing. You think it's gonna be like this really scary thing, but you're actually just going talking to people and making tea yeah. and, and you how to make tea at that point, which is good. Uh, but yeah, a stand-up memory was definitely the big fight, one of the big fights. When it happened, your immediate reaction was to get me back on the bus. So you like dragged me back on the bus as this guy sort of squaring up. And this wee old lady ran off the bus and literally jumped in the way. And then as the guy was getting beat pretty badly, uh, she's literally like putting her body on the line and the guy's, somehow she never got touched. He was like punching around about her and things like that. And she was doing her best to try and sort of stop in the way. But it was definitely, one of the like standout memories for me is thinking how real it was, like how, how scary that was and the fact that she just put her body in the line was like a total show of love and that's really what the Soup Kitchen was all about at the time was to show love to these guys in a way that they'd never really seen it and she was literally just laying her body right there and saying like don't hit him, hit me if you, if you have to hit somebody. I try to think if I had to describe it in one word it would be family because mm -hmm. you come on the bus and it's, it's now a family, it's now people chatting to each other, catching up. It's like a family reunion every time you come on the bus. It's it's totally different from like the, before you showed love by giving the guys stuff, you would give them the, there's their soup or their hot chocolate and things like that, but it's now the love is just being there for them and just like, ah, just, just giving their time really and, and, and spending time with them and chatting. And, and it's more like that family atmosphere, you come on and everybody's catching up and everybody's having a laugh. And if they need help, they know the help's there, but it's not like we are here to give you stuff. It's just like, how you doing? Yeah. What's, 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 yeah. what's happening this week and things like that. So if you didn't have the food one week and you still turned up, guys would still come on the bus, they'd still stay for the, the long as they would stay. I don't think they need the food, they need, they're, not, they're not coming for that anymore, they're coming just to see the volunteers and see each other. And things like that. Looking back, um, I was very shy and nervous and apprehensive right back at the beginning. Um, and now just being amongst the people for as long as I have, um, you build up relationships with them, um, you're able to talk with them. Uh, just before I stopped being a regular volunteer, I had come out of the kitchen and was starting to just engage in conversations um, with some of the clients. Um, and just, I guess from a personal um, standpoint, being able to be comfortable enough to do that um, has been a big thing. And just feeling easy um, with everybody on the bus and seeing um, the real kind of family atmosphere that those um, regular clients um, have when they come, like they've got a real ownership of the bus and it's just lovely to be able to share that with them.
it. It's so good to be actually practically involved with something and actually seeing somebody going out and like helping within the community and actually seeing a need and doing something about it like you did when you first started the bus and not just seeing this starting a bus, keeping going with the bus and not changing anything but seeing right we can do this so we've got the hot drinks, we've got food and we've got things that people donate but then maybe we could do with another wee space so space for people to fill out forms and space for maybe more in-depth chats because sometimes it's hard to do that when everybody's chatting and joking away in the bus so then you start to think and start the second wee bus and then being flexible and adapting to what the need is. Most days are, are good these days and I use it as motivation. Uh, but at, at, the, at the worst point of everything that, that happened, uh, I had lost everything. Um, eventually even given up my, my last tenancy. Uh, in fact, the night we met, Suzanne, um, I was on my way to the air brig to, to throw myself off uh, and as I came through the underpass towards the car park where you were parked up um, there was just this kind of this glow, this gleam of light uh, and as it was passing you, you were you were standing outside um, and you just come over and say, would you like a hot chocolate? <laughs> uh, and, it was, and it wasn't just like hot chocolate, it's joint, you know, cream joint marshmallow and you were just so full of life and so bubbly uh, and so inviting and, and such a warm personality that it, it distracted me. The food that was offered, you know, it was... It's, it's one of the things I've, I've, I've since learned, um, and I don't know if you know yourself, but some of the worst decisions you can ever make in your life is when you've got an empty stomach. There's a verse in Thessalonians that says, He who calls us is faithful, and he will do it. And that has been our experience. He has been so faithful over the past 10 years, and everything that is wheels in motion has been done by God.